And we get the feeling that someone looks familiar. Then suddenly, it hits you. My name is Beth. Alison. Katya. Kasima. My name is Sarah. But who are they? What's going on? When did I become us? Cloning became visible to the public eye with Dolly the Sheep in 1996. Her mere existence, a result of scientists named Ian Wilmot and Keith Campbell, raised serious questions about cloning and whether it should be legal. While cloning animals may have its scientific benefits, including replicating desirable animals, producing positive genetic alterations, and giving scientists new ideas to research, morally, cloning humans is a touchy topic that presents many dangerous outcomes. Therefore, therapeutic cloning, cloning for mainly medical purposes, should be legal, but reproductive cloning of humans should be illegal. Cloning involves somatic cell nuclear transfer. According to the University of Utah, the nucleus is, quote, a compartment that holds the cell's DNA. The DNA is divided into packages called chromosomes, and it contains all the information needed to form an organism, unquote. Now, a somatic cell is, quote, any cell in the body other than the sperm and egg, the two types of reproductive cells. In mammals, every somatic cell has two complete sets of chromosomes, unquote. To make a clone, scientists isolate somatic cells, removing the nucleus and all of its DNA from an eggshell. The nucleus is then transferred from the somatic cell to the egg cell. This transfer is often done using an electric current. The egg cell then behaves like a regular egg, developing an embryo. Can I borrow this? Guten Morgen. Katja Obinger. You actually look kind of hot. You're damn right. Uh, Beth Child. You're not Beth. I'm not Beth! Dirty little copycat. Detective Child? How did scientists put babies inside you? What? You're not my mother. Silly? Of course I'm your mum. Who else would I be? Hello, everyone. Oh, he's being Alison. I like the lights on. The suite to be a perfect 68 degrees. You're Sarah. Yeah, nice to meet you too. We're not safe here. What are you talking about, eh? <laughs> oh, pleasure to meet you, Phoenix. Tatiana Masrani returns in the roles of a lifetime. You can do this. Okay, show them. Orphan Black. One main scientific argument involves the age of the clone. Since a clone is an exact copy of someone, if that someone were older, would the clone have a shorter lifespan? The ends of chromosomes have repeated sequences of DNA that are called telomeres. The telomeres shorten with age. So they shorten every time a cell is divided. And so they're longest at the embryo stage and they are shortest when the person is older and when they disappear the person dies. Um, so some believe then that um, clones would be born with already shortened telomeres which means they, could, they wouldn't live as long. If cloning became advanced enough, and that is a big if, um, to safely clone humans, it would raise the question, it would raise questions of morality. By cloning someone, one could argue that the scientist is playing God with the resulting clone since they have complete control over the person's genetic material and the circumstances of their birth. In The Ethics of Human Cloning, 
Leon Cass and James Wilson argue that, quote, cloning personifies our desire to fully control the future while being subject to no controls ourselves. We have lost our awe and wonder before the deep mysteries of nature and human of of nature and of life." Unquote. They also write any attempt to clone a human being would constitute an ethical experiment upon the resulting child to be. As the animal experiments indicate there are grave risks of mishaps and deformities. Then, of course, there is the question of the clone itself. How would it function feeling pressured to live up to or surpass its predecessor, identity crises would be rampant. As Cass and Wilson put it, the clone will be saddled with a genotype that already lived. It will not be, it be fully a surprise to the world. People are always likely to compare his performance and like that of his alter ego. Even though the clone will be its own person, different from the original. If somehow we found DNA from Mozart and or Beethoven, how would their clones behave in the 21st century? Arlene Judith Klotzko, in A Clone of Your Own, believes that cloning for resurrection would be horrible since, quote, when you are dead, you are dead. Your clone would be someone else, a separate and unique person. Personal identity is not equivalent to genetic identity. Unquote. Bill Clinton himself said that in 97, that cloning was morally reprehensible, so why do it? Do it because the benefits outweigh the risk. The telomere theory was disproved with Dolly living a normal lifespan, so that is not a stable argument. If we are talking about reproductive cloning benefits, then Cass and Wilson have a good point. Quote, cloning enhances our liberation, especially women's liberation, from the confines of nature. It liberates women for the need of men altogether, for the process requires only eggs, nuclei, and, for the time being, uteri, unquote. In Clone by Gina Colada, the author points out that, quote, if doctors could make many identical copies of an embryo, they could avoid having to give women powerful drugs month after month to whip their ovaries into overdrive. Doctors do this because they need as many eggs as possible so that they can fertilize them and create as many embryos as possible to increase the woman's chances of pregnancy. It would be much less expensive and much much easier for, the, for a woman to have one or two embryos multiplied than to force her ovaries to produce a dozen more eggs." Unquote. In the same book, she mentions that Lee Silver, a renowned scientist, believes, quote, that cloning would be safer than the ordinary way of making babies. It bypasses the most common form of birth defect, having the wrong number of chromosomes, unquote. Silver also says, we have no compelling information proving that cloning is dangerous and it is disingenuous to pretend otherwise. Cloning animals presents a wealth of opportunities as well. Cloning could, according to Colada, quote, Produce replicas of perfect farm animals. Scientists could add genes to animals so that, for instance, a cow might make valuable drugs in her milk. They could even produce animals whose organs might be used for human transplantation. This is called xenotransplantation, or transplanting organs from animals to humans. One of the more promising examples of this involves pigs. Pigs have organs roughly the same size of a human. Pigs, however, have a, a sugar on the surface of their organs that humans reject. If we could remove the gene that makes the sugar molecule, then human bodies might accept pig organs. Pigs also have plenty of piglets, so numbers would not be an issue. Scientists have already begun to clone pigs whose organs are on their way to becoming suitable for humans. Progress like this could be the cure for diabetes, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and many others. Ian Wilmot and Roger Highfield argue in After Dolly that, quote, sim cells offer a way to grow a patient's own heart muscle to carry out repairs, unquote. This type of cloning is called therapeutic cloning. Therapeutic cloning begins with a biopsy, 
and the patient's cells then grow up in culture. The nucleus from one cell is transferred into a nucleusless egg and the embryo is then developed for about five days. After these five days, the embryonic cells, stem cells can be, according to Klotzko, quote, grown up in culture, multiplied, or rendered immortal, preserving their potential to become all other cell types. This technology could mean wheelchair-bound people could walk again. People could clone their own organs for transplant with no chance of rejection. Blood transfusions would always work. And, of course, there is the question of scientific freedom. As Ezekiel K. Emanuel, an ethicist, put in the book Clone, quote, freedom of scientific inquiry is an American value, unquote. The International Academy of Humanists believes, quote, that an anti-cloning fever would result in draconian laws that preclude the advancements of exciting science, unquote. America was built on the idea of freedom for all, and if scientific freedom is restricted, it will be a step backwards. We're clones. We're someone's experiment, and they're killing us off. I wanted to float that whole clone thing a lot softer. Who is Elizabeth Childs? She's a girl who looks like me. Girl with a pretty nice life. Oh, so nice. Why'd you kill herself? I just need you to be my backup. I don't even know what backup is. Therefore, with all these facts in mind, I believe that cloning should be legal, with restrictions. Animals should be able to be cloned freely, but it should be watched carefully since overpop. Therefore, with all these facts in mind, I believe that cloning should be legal. However, I would want it restricted. Animals should be able to be cloned freely, but it should be watched carefully, since overpopulation is never good. Genetic alterations to these animals should be allowed. Therapeutic cloning should also be legal, since there are no true drawbacks to it. Why make something with the ability to cure Alzheimer's illegal? However, human cloning should be banned. We've all seen how that ends up.